with an astute knowledge in the spheres of power. Mr. Kola Additional is the Group Managing Director of Sahara Power Group. He is a consummate entrepreneur with experience that transverses the academia, finance, energy, trade, and diplomacy. He is a director at Sahara Group a leading international energy and infrastructure empire with operations in over 38 countries across Africa, Asia, Middle East and Europe. He is indeed a man with an excellent spirit, topped with philanthropy, wisdom and passion for youth and young adults. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Kola Adeshino. With Jesus' joy, put your hands together for Mr. Kala Additional. Yeah, thank you very much um, for this opportunity. Um, I attended a session yesterday with some young uh, stars, very great guys, about uh, 16 of them or so. And um, one of them said, hey, sir, why are you so energetic? And we know your age, so why? I said, because of the fact that when I have youths around me, I get younger and I look better. So I want to thank you guys for making me younger and better. Um, today is not a session for me to actually um, share any knowledge with you in the real sense of the word. It's more of experience, but I want to learn from you more than you learn from me. So it's going to be a symbiotic relationship, I hope. Let's pray. Everlasting Father, King of King and Lord of Lord, we thank you so much for a day like this. We thank you for the privilege you've given us to come and sit down, to hear ways and means how we can make our lives better. Father, Lord, without you, without insight, without your power, without you being with us, we cannot be anything. Father, Lord, make us a tool of excellence in your hand in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, at the end of this day, let every one of us not just be hearers, but doers of your word. For in Jesus' name we pray. Okay, um, very quick one because I want to wrap this up very fast. My plan was originally not to share any slide, but uh, based on uh, pressure from your generation, some of those who are seated here, I uh, had to put together something. Um, so I'll share a slide. But more importantly, I want you to ask me questions because whatever has brought you here today um, is something that speaks to the fact that you know that there is a need in your life. Isn't it? You have a need somewhere. So you want to meet those needs. So I would rather engage in a question and answer session so that we can learn together. Uh, the topic for me is income diversification. Um, I think we can start the projection now. Media, would you kindly please project? Um, income diversification, that's the topic of today. The next slide, please. But there's something happening that I know every one of us in this room were very familiar with today. The very first one is the inflation rate. The cost of goods and services, have they increased? Yes, yes or They've really increased, isn't it? Yes, Good. When you look at uh, exchange rate, <laughs> our exchange rate, has it gone down or gone up? It's going up, huh? Good. Now, electricity, the cost is going up, isn't it? Yes. You're feeling the pinch. Yes. You're in pain, huh? Yes. Good. Now, when you look at the cumulative effect of some of the macro issues in our environment, you realize that we're going through a moment that more often than not will be regarded as turbulent and really, 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 really challenging. 
But the best of time, the best time to make money is now. A lot of us prefer situations and circumstances where everything is working out well for us. We assume that when inflation rate is low, exchange rate is low, interest rate is low, that's when we make things happen. No. Greatness is always forged through fire. Your human bodies, the way you are all seated, if you don't exercise your bodies, what happens to you? You lose shape, isn't it? You start to gasp for breath. You walk just a mile. You're panting. Why? Because you're not exercising what? Your body. The rigor of life represents the manure required for mankind to become better than who he or she is. I was forged in poverty. <laughs> poverty made me <laughs> a success story. I grew up in Shomolu. Poverty well defined. Yet, I said to myself, I will not remain poor. I'm going to go higher. I'll leave Shomolu, then to come to Ikoi, uh, Corona, uh, Nursery and Primary School. That was a redeemed church there. That's where I will come and fellowship. So I was in fellowship in, in Shomolu. And the reason for that, you're going to hear it very soon. Next slide. Look at these currencies. Is any one of you here earning revenue or income in any of these currencies today? If, if you are, please let me see your hand. Up in dollars and pounds, yen. Is anybody euros? Okay, good. By the end of this program, reignite. Your lives will be reignited in Jesus' name. For those whose lives were not even ignited in the first instance, your lives will be ignited in Jesus' name. You need to be reignited for you to be reignited. Isn't it? Good. So I'm going to put a bit of fire under you. So when it's hot, know that it's me pushing you from here. Those currencies, one more time, please. If you are earning Naira, and what you are buying is in any of these currencies, what's happening to you? Yeah. It's interactive. It's not a one-way traffic. Please, feel free. Yes. What will happen to you? Ah, you're, you're shy. You already know what will happen. Madam, yes, thank you very much. You're losing more than you're earning. You're losing more than you're earning. Thank you very much. Who wants to be a billionaire in dollars? Aha. Okay, billionaire in pounds. Okay, which one do you prefer, pounds or dollars? Only. <laughs> The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes 11, 1 to 2, and I read, send your grains across the seas and in time, profits will flow back to you. But divide your investment among many places for you do not know what risk might lie ahead. You need to read that again. Sp spread your grains. Spread what? Your grains. You will hand revenue in dollars in Jesus' name. And I will hand in pounds in Jesus' name. Uh, but now, I, I tried for you now. 
uh, I tried for you income diversification. Next slide. What does it mean? Now I'm going to bust your bubble. And in busting your bubble, please just spare me. I want you to understand. Before you diversify, you first must specialize. Because a lot of you are going to live here today wondering, okay, yes, how do I diversify? Of course, <laughs> you can only diversify if you have a basis. Your basis is your area of specialization. Your area of specialization is your core competence. Your core competence is something you know best to do. It's where your talent comes out the best. What talent do you have today that you are not monetizing? A lot of people have skills, and those skills are just, pardon me, useless. You have the skill to sing. You can sing your voice. Everybody says, wow, angelic voice. You are not in a choir. You are not even singing in the secular world. But in the, your house, everybody says, wow, wow, wow. The mortuary of failure is filled with a lot of souls like that. Do you want to be one of them? Good. The very first thing you need to do is to specialize. You need to find something you know you can do better than any other person. If you are not there yet, you must keep honing your word, your skill. Don't start diversifying without specializing. There is something you must be known for. What is that thing? There is something that makes you outstanding. That is the foundation you require upon which diversification can be built. Majority of the generation, with due respect to most of you in that cadre, would you respect one more time? You're confused. You really don't know what you're doing. And that's a question you need to answer. As a matter of fact, there are two questions. Everyone here seated and everyone alive that is going to make a meaning out of life must answer. One, who are you? <laughs> it's a question you have to ask. Who am I? The second question is who am I becoming? If you can't answer the first question, I can assure you 100% you won't be able to answer the second question. So the wind of time will be blowing and you'll be part of those that I consider <laughs> the resistors and the bystanders of life. I'm talking about resistors and bystanders of life. There are four classes of people in the world. You have one, the champions. The champions are so few and far apart. You hardly see many of them. They are the Ronaldos of this world the Messi's of this world, the Pelé's of this world, the Michael Jackson's of this world, there are just not too many. In their own area of specialization, they've excelled in a manner that they've become global, iconic brands. For some of them, you don't even need to mention their second name, just say Mandela. So who are you? Are you a champion? The second set of people in life are helpers. I'm talking of helpers. In church, we always call them destiny helpers. <laughs> the helpers are not necessarily the people that see great vision, no. They're not necessarily that would want to tell you that I have a dream. One day, this nation, under God, no. They don't have that capacity. But they are the ones that will stand behind the champions to elevate the champion to achieve the vision that has been articulated. These two categories of people, they will always make it in life, irrespective of the exchange rate, inflation rate, interest rate, or whatever poverty rate people around the world are talking about. You know, in spite of poverty, most of us still go ahead to procure items we desire, isn't it? First one is for what? Food. 
The second one is clothing. The third one is shelter. Is your business in any way anchored around those primary needs of man? Is your commodity or service something that is desired by the people and they are willing to pay for it? Are they willing to buy your product again and again? The third category of people are resistors. Resistors are critics. Anytime you have a brilliant idea, they are the first to tell you why it will never happen. How that thing cannot happen. It will not happen. They will give you a thousand and one reason why whatever idea you've come up will not work. Now, sadly, probably most of you will say here today that I don't like such people. I love them. I actually intentionally seek critics in my life. The critics that have come to me are those people that have enabled me to become who I am today. Because rather than laze around and live in fool's paradise, and people that are just praising you, even when you are falling, they are the ones challenging you. You have to define one from the other amongst the resistors. The last category are bystanders. Bystanders, they won't participate in anything concerning your life. They are onlookers. They are just looking at you. Ah, this man has bought a new shoe. They know when you are wearing a new dress. They know when your wristwatches have changed. They know when you are growing fatter. They know when you are growing taller. They know everything about you, but they're just watching. They won't say anything. They are bystanders. And they are similar to the people you see in stadium. When you watch matches, those people that go to watch matches, they are not on the field. They are not amongst the 22 people playing. They're just there watching. Now, let me ask you a question. Of these four categories, which one would you prefer? Quickly. What, what did, I, did I hear? Champion. I thought somebody from Ibadan said champion. <laughs> huh? You want to be a champion? Okay. How big is your dream? <laughs> it's massive. What have you done with it? You know, talk is cheap. The best place to formulate dreams, your mouth. Just talk. Some are so articulate. I call them PowerPoint presenters. They solve all problems in PowerPoint. If you want to make money, don't go to them. But if you want to see PowerPoint presentation, the best you can find anywhere in the world, they will project to you, they will give you uh, yes, yes, you, you make money. You'll be making money, but the money will be inside that PowerPoint. You won't see it in reality. So, which one are you? You don't need to answer me yet. I'm coming back to you. Why do you need to diversify? You need to diversify because of the fact that <laughs> the wind of change is always blowing. And the wind of change does not respect anybody. I remember with vivid pleasure growing up, I'm sure in this room, if I can find two persons or three, I'll be lucky. Who amongst us use slide rules? Who used a slide rule in this room? This very beautiful, aha, nobody, slide rule. Okay, there is one hand behind. Uh, my brother said he used slide rule. He will tell me what it is and how we used to use it then in order to confirm whether he truly used it or not. Lock table. The lock table now, Abba now, Abba. You can see some faces that use lock table now. Ah, uh, use your lock table now. Abi, yeah, yes, no, no, you didn't use it. You use calculator. Don't say yes. We know those. I can, I, I know here from the complexion of the people here, I know those that use lock, lock table. You don't know what a lock table is. I can tell you that for free. Now, imagine if you are a manufacturer of slide rule. And that's the only thing you could manufacture. What would happen to you? You're gone. You're gone. That's it. <laughs> You're gone. 
Lock table, those people are gone. Cassette of those days, gone. All those things, products that we thought were timeless, they're gone. So invariably, in order for you to create a system that can give you sustainable success and prosperity, you need to do what? You need to diversify. You need to diversify because you need confidence for yourself. One of the things I realized when I was very, very poor, my confidence level was very, very low. A lot of people thought it was my height that made me to be looking down. They didn't know that it was because of my pocket. But when God Almighty started blessing me, to look up was not a problem. As a matter of fact, those days I used to want to bend to the level of the people speaking to me. But these days, even the higher I go, the better I become. I want their necks to be paining them. So it gives you what? Confidence. It gives you self-esteem. The people you probably could not speak to before, you'll be able to speak with them easily. If uh, the richest man comes in here now in Africa, I'm sure I can tell you, the majority of you will be petrified. <laughs> you see, what am I going to say to him now? Should I say I want to take a picture? <laughs> or what am I going to ask for? But for those who are this, they have their own pepper too. They walk up to him. Allergy, how far? Share everything, they know wala. Hey, what can we do together now? Best of the same feather. That will be your story in Jesus' name. Why you should diversify? Why should you diversify? I think go higher, go more. Why should you diversify the active and income, uh, the passive uh, page? The first one is that diversification gives you the opportunity to save and invest. And talking about this, there's another quick one I need to pass across. Mankind stands every day of his life on three platforms. Just three platforms. One, consumption. Two, savings. And three, investment. If you are standing on platform three, <laughs> wind of change will blow. You will not what? be bothered. Why? You've invested very well. You are investment driven by nature. Investment is first love to you. When you see 10 Naira, you're not thinking of ice cream. You're not thinking of goody goody. You're thinking of how do, you, do I multiply this 10 Naira to 20 Naira? Once you are investment driven, no amount of money will be too small. And I'm sorry to tell you this. Most investors I know, and I know very many, very strong and powerful and successful, they test you with small money and see what you're going to do with that small money before they can give you a big money. It's the parable of the talent. It's just the parable of the talent. So when they give you, you ask for 100,000, they say, take 50. I'm sorry to say, more from experience, I've, heard, I've seen situations where 50 of them, 50. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. And they disappear. First, that person's threshold to be able to assess additional wealth has dropped by 50%, isn't it? Now I'm waiting. After a while, the fellow comes back and says again, uh, you know that investment? Because you didn't give me 100. Instead of the 50, you didn't work. Now I need 200. <laughs> I'll quickly laugh in vernacular. Because I know such a person is not going to multiply that wealth. You start to invest with small things, then the big things will happen. There is a company I invested in, belatedly, painfully so. It's one of my best investments now. When this business started, the young man came to my house, and by the way, I'm going to bring him here to speak to us. I'm going to bring some of the young texts you've been reading about in FinTech lately. I'm going to bring them to the church, and they will speak to us. This fellow came to my house and said, Sir, 
please, this business, he has potential, this, that, 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 that. I just looked at him. I said, boy, I'm not feeling you. I'm sorry. Come later. Later, I met him in London at the airport. I looked at him. I could see signs of prosperity. You know, it's not, it's not so easy to hide prosperity. You understand? You can't hide it. People will start to know that, okay, some things have uh, changed. So I could see. Uh, so I said, boy, how far now? He says, ah, great be to God. Ah, that business. <laughs> I asked you one naira. You know what I bought now, sir? I said, what? He said, 1,000 naira. Ah. Are you serious? He said, when are you coming back to <laughs> Lagos? He told me. I said, okay, come. Let's sit down. Let's talk. And he came to the house. And I invested. And no regret whatsoever after that investment. That's Kuda for you. No regret, none whatsoever. This young man came out. No regret whatsoever. I've made my money back. I'm just telling you why you have to what? Diversify. The second platform, savings. Huh. Savings is a platform you shouldn't stand on for too long in Nigeria. The reason is what? Why? Why is savings not a good platform lately in Nigeria? Inflate. Time value of money. Good. You know, I went to a night school. They didn't teach us that. Because of the fact that there is erosion happening today, with regards to the currency we're holding, savings is a bit suspect. But yet, it's better than the last platform, which is the worst platform mankind can stand upon, consumption. Every consumer in life must realize one thing, if you have not realized it today, that you are the one that made Aliko Dangote. You are the one that made Bill Gates. It's your consumption that made Jeff Bezos. It's what you buy from them that makes them. They are not minting cash. They are only appealing to your appetite and taste and preferences. The moment your income is over and above your consumption, poverty beckons. It's not any, it, nobody is doing you in your village. Don't waste pastor's time. And I see it, with due respect, where people are wasting pastor's time, that some demon, there is no demon, the demon is you. The demon you need to conquer is the demon of consumption. Ice cream people, they are passing by, give me one. Goody, goody, let me have. I want to go to Domino's, uh, whatever. I want to eat this one. You want to consume. Your own is just, what are you producing? What are you producing that people are consuming? So if you continue to stay on the path of consumption, you will never be rich. No matter how, let's add the boy. Oedepo, put you in the middle. Put hand on top of you. That idea is not going to work. I lie. Because why? You are consuming your own destiny. Your mouth. You love everything. I want, I want, I want. Let's move ahead. You need to equally recognize that when you have an emergency, what comes handy? Diversified income. I'm known today as an LAG expert. But that's what the world celebrates. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not who I am. I have different sources, and that's why I hardly sleep. I'm perpetually chasing something, because I know people are chasing me. So I always want to make a difference. And in making a difference, I'm seeking where people are spending their money. And that leads me to something very vital that I must share. If I don't share any of this, my spirit will spank me later. 
In order for you to look for opportunities in life, there are three areas where money comes from. Globally, it's not just in Nigeria. First one, follow the money. Follow what? The money. Let me explain what that means. The consumers of the world, where are they spending their money? What are they spending their money on? Do you know that a lot of people prefer to give their phones food to feeding themselves? True or false? Good. So they will first feed the phone. Then they will later think, okay, I'm hungry, but the phone must be fed first. MTN made money from that. A lot of people now are on Big Brother, isn't it? Ah. They'll, 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 they'll just sit down, Big Brother. No, Saga must win. No, it's not Saga. As, no, it's Nini that has to win. No, it's not Nini. Nini must go home. Angel is a fool. No, Angel is not a fool. Angel is naked. Oh, no, no, Angel is naked. Fantastic. Continue. You are eating your destiny. Because time, 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 a currency that is not perpetual <laughs> is going. The time you came in here is not the time it is now. So time is moving. The 90 million whoever is going to win in Big Brother is not yours. Ah, continue to use your money to vote. The money you don't have. My daughter called me. I was in London. I said she wanted to vote. I said, vote for what? She said uh, on Big Brother that she needs uh, me to activate one number so that she will know the code. I said, no, I'll soon send it to you. So yesterday, we were home. I said, you didn't get the number. I said, Dad, I understand you. I knew that you are not going to send it. You know, because, trust me, if you follow the money, you will know where to invest in and what to invest in. The second thing is follow the babies. Follow what? The babies. What does that mean? The population in the world is increasing, isn't it? In spite of uh, exchange rates, people are procreating, isn't it? Aha. That's the market you need to tap into. I shared an idea here the other time for those who are doing um, fashion and the rest of them. <laughs> instinctive buyers, where do you find them? People that instinctively, they, they didn't plan for you to, they're just walking on the road like this, and then they're buying an item they didn't plan for. Where do you normally find them? Where? Online. Okay, online. Good. Osho D. Ha, mama ni eh. Osho D, mama. Eh? Mama ni eh, Osho D. Oftentimes, guess what? It's our babies that make us buy things instinctively. Go and check. When mothers and fathers are going in the market, they, they all they don't want to spend money. They hardly want to spend money. But it's only, mommy, mommy, I like, mommy, I like. Then when they say, mommy, they like, daddy will be looking at you as if he didn't hear it. We're late for where we're going to. It's we're late, let's go. Mommy will say, ah, ah, daddy, let's buy for her now. Let's buy for her now. Baby's clothes, because they grow older every day, isn't it? They need new ones. If you are making clothes for babies, you will make money. They will keep growing. It's a market that is inexhaustible. The last one, global trend. What's trending? She said something just now. Online. Majority of us, before we pick our Bibles, guess what we pick is our phone. When we pick our phones, what do we do? We want to check what's happening, updates. And I hope, I, I know I can see a lot of navigators in this room. I can see their faces. From Instagram, they will go to Twitter. From Twitter, they will go to Facebook. From Facebook, they will go back to LinkedIn. From LinkedIn, they will go to Snapchat. From Snapchat, they will go, which one? Tick, what? TikTok. <laughs> TikToking. So they will just be moving around. Do you know why else we are moving around? Somebody is making money. Mark is making a lot of money. Jack is making money. Are you making money? You need to follow the money. Follow the babies. 
follow the global trend. Technology is now the new order of the day. And by the way, by way of just a uh, subtle explanation, Kuda Bank that I invested in has only one branch. Kuda Bank is worth $512 million today. By the end of the year, that bank will be worth $1.2 billion this year. By the end of next year, it will be worth $4 billion. And it's just one branch. How many staff? 27 staff. So, the Access Bank of this world, GTB and all of them, they are all now thinking and panicking that what is going on here? And why? Because of the fact that the appeal of Kuda Bank is to the youth. It's not to people like me. And where is the population? Follow the babies. Huh? The population is here. So if I have a target market for myself, it's only for pain relieving tablets, multivitamin, and the rest of them. You understand? So it's all these says to me that, that uh, uh, let's go to the cliff. I said to do what? He said to jump. Jump that. What happened? <laughs> I said even Jesus Christ said he's not going to do it. Talk to of me. To go and jump on top of a mountain. What am I looking for? The people in my village, they will say, finally, we caught him. <laughs> You know, so you need to know what is happening around you. Where are people spending their money? How are they spending their money? What are they buying? Why are they buying what they are buying? Now you need to now study whatever they are buying. How can I make it better? How can I make it cheaper? How can I make it more qualitative? How can I make it more readily available? Simple. That's prosperity standing in front of you. But each time you go, instead of you to go out and think of what is going on around you, uh, you say somebody is fighting you in the village. Nobody is fighting you. You are the one fighting yourself. So please note, diversify what? Your income. I said here, there are many active ways through which you can make money. The first one is you create your own product. The second one is create your own service. The third one, you sell other people's products. A lot of people have manufactured, they have manufactured goods and services that they don't know how to push. Help them push it. They don't know how to. Now, you, are, you, you know influencers. Interestingly, in our time, influencers have a voice, and a strong voice for that matter. And by talking about influencers, the two gentlemen coming behind me are just fantastic. I'm the John the Baptist. They are the Jesus Christ. Please listen to them. They know more than me. They are the influencers. Why are people following them? Who are the people following them? For me, growing up, it's only goodness and mercy that, knew, that I know should follow me. But now, people follow people. You need to be able to sell other people's services. You need to be a marketer. You need to have a virtual assistant. As I stand here, I have people working with me virtually. Occasionally, a lot of people don't know, on Instagram, but somebody said, oh, God, you are usually on Instagram. He says, Instagram. Instagram call. <laughs> Where's I doing? I said, somebody, somebody managing my account for me. So occasionally I say, oh, boy, bring anything personal that this person knows me. Let me have it. Then I log on. I do whatever I need to do. Respond and back to him. Instagram. Am I making money there? I'm not. It's only when I start to make money that you'll see me there more often. As a matter of fact, you won't even see me there. I'll create my own platform. So you need to have a virtual assistant that, needs, that can help you. Be an agent. Be what? An agent. In Ikoi today, the number of tenanted property is just approximately 46%. Invariably, 54% of the houses in Ikoi are not tenanted. Of course, the owners are looking for tenants. And you now say you are poor. And somebody is looking for help. So go and help him. Every great man needs helper. <laughs> I'm looking for somebody to help me. That's what I look for every day. Anybody that wants to help me, you'll be my friend. I will, I will be talking to each other regularly. But uh, you are going to be a problem to me. Ah, you can't be my friend, though. I said, marry well. Did I say, say that right? Marry what? Well, it's part of your income diversification strategy. 
Yeah. Because if you marry well, <laughs> it's, it's when two come together now, not only they become one, they become enriched because of the fact that platforms you didn't have, you now have. People you didn't know, you now know. Access you didn't have, you now have. A lot of people have had access to prosperity that they never thought was possible just because of the fact that they married well. Now it's possible. Marry what? Marry well. Be a relationship broker. Invest in foreign assets. Invest in what? Foreign assets. Now, as I close that one, so that I can round up for my question and answer session quickly. If there is a question I'm likely to hear today is, to a guy, that first money, how do I now make it now? <laughs> because you've spoken now, it's easy for you, these motivational speakers, to talk like this. But that first money, tell me now, that's a cocoa. Tell me, how am I going to make it? Now, and I will now tell you my own story. I've said this many times. Let's forget Shomolu. Born poor, suffered, and all that. But I realized that for me to achieve what I needed in life, I need three things. First, I need to be very humble. That humility will take me further than pride can take me. That no matter whatever I become in the future, even when that future had not come, faith had told me I was going to be great, that this boy, you are going to be great. But I first needed to learn humility, that that way I'll be able to become greater than even what I can envisage in my life. Humble people are easier to help than people with ego. When you are poor and you have shoulder high like this, you are wearing shoulder pad and you are poor, there is a problem. Oh? Because those that can help you will not help you. They won't even see you. And then when they are to describe that one, she is full of herself or he is full of himself. That's all. Be very, very what? Humble. Number two, you must be hungry. You must be what? Hungry. A lot of us, we believe that uh, once I make a millionaire, and it's part of the childish uh, stupidity that I think I had in my time as well. We say, ah, once I make one million, ah, I make one million, I arrive near one million. Then <laughs> I kept looking at some of my friends. They, though I didn't have a million, that one million, you know, one million is nothing now. Yeah, we'll do far more than that. And then one million came. And me, I like to understate my wealth. It's my traditional behavior. And please, that is part of the humility side of the equation. I prefer to understate myself than to overstate myself so that those who can help me can help me. Because otherwise, if you overstate yourself, I won't, you're already made now. People are talking of Lamborghini. You two, you say you have Lamborghini. I mean, well, it's only guinea brocade you have. So, <laughs> so you know that there is a problem. And you know, part of the generational phrase is fake it till you make it. <laughs> Don't join them in that uh, man, stupid mantra. It's a mantra that destroys, and it destroys destiny. And the third one for me is smart. You have to be smart. Now, for you to be smart, it's not necessarily intellect I'm talking about here. It's relationship. I say it one more time. Smartness is not about intellect. It's actually your relationship skill. You must be able to look around and say to yourself, okay, this brother is going somewhere and I want to be an ally to this brother because this brother, he has something that is beneficial to me. And then you now must have a staying power. Now, one of the things that messes us up it's because of our microwave generation mentality. We all believe that it must happen now. Now. Trust me. <laughs> Rome wasn't built in a day. I had the privilege of listening yesterday, and those are the things I do, and I'm recommending it to you. I went on YouTube, my spare moment, listened to the interview, granted by Warren Buffet and Bill Gates to the students of Columbia. It was a time well spent. And by the time you internalize the messages these two great fellows have to share, 
you will see reasons why they are who they are and why we are who we are. Everything is in the mindset that you are going to succeed in life, you're going to make it in life is a mindset issue. You can acquire the skill set that is transferable. Mindset is not transferable. I can't teach you attitude. I can say whatever I have to say. You are who you are. You are going to determine who you want to become. Some of the things I've said today will enter here and disappear at that door. Me, I've said my own. Whether you use it or not is yours, isn't it? The decision is yours to take. And I don't want you to come here for reignite for the purpose of quotable quotes alone. I know this generation loves quotable quotes. I to told Lani Abayomi, I said, I beg, eh? If you are looking for quotable quotes, spare me. All. You are looking for raw experience. Ha, <laughs> hard knuckles. <laughs> I'm here. And that's why I'm prepared now to listen to you in this question and answer session. Diversify, but first specialize. Thank you. Questions, please. Questions? Ah, no, no, no. Do, don't do this now. You must ask questions. No. Otherwise, I'm not leaving this stage. Questions, questions, please. Yes, thank you, madam. Otherwise, I'm going to ask my question. If no other person asks, I'll ask and I'll pick anybody to answer. So, question, yeah. How do you identify investments that are viable? Because I know down the line I've, invest, I've made some investments that went down the drain. Mm. Okay. How do you identify? Okay, some of the answers are embedded in all I said, but let me give you the simple principle like we follow um, as an organization. The very first one is that you must know that there's a need. There must be a need. There is a need here. It's just like the person that sells um, ice cream. You're selling ice cream. And you know that ice cream can better be sold when it is hot, isn't it? But when it's raining, <laughs> ice cream sellers don't sell, isn't it? So you now carefully and smartly, from a diversification perspective, equally now keep inside your truck umbrellas. So when it is hot, you bring out your ice cream. People are leaky. It starts to rain. You turn the, the flyer. Umbrella is here. Instead of ice cream is here. The umbrella is here. You put it like this. You are using exactly the same resources to sell different products. Always first look for a need. That is there a need. Like I said earlier, we are still relatively in a primitive society. Hence the level of poverty we have in this nation. Invariably, food, clothing, and shelter are so central to human survival in Africa. So if you are in that space, then there is a need. Now you now have a value proposition. What is your own value proposition? There are food sellers everywhere now. There are people selling clothes everywhere. What will stand you out and make you unique in that environment? You must be able to define it. Don't rush to the market. Part of the challenge is that the desire to succeed and be publicly acclaimed to, be, to have succeeded is always there. So that propensity is something you need to curtail, which is where humility comes in as well. You need to bake your cake before you make a break. You cannot just say, no, I, now I've just done it. Everybody come and see. No, test it. Verify. Be sure. Cost it well. Look at the willingness to pay question. Because you might be able to get a buyer one time out of annoyance. They may not come again. 
And meanwhile, you're building a business that is meant to life a lifetime, last a lifetime on these people. What is their willingness to pay appetite like? What's their capacity to pay like? You equally now need to empathize with them. Because you don't want to sell a commodity at a price higher than common sense. Otherwise, you won't be able to sell again. So you need to have that mindset. And three other things, quickly. You need key relationships. You need key partnership. You need key resources. You need to know those who can help you deliver what you cannot deliver. It's something that you have to do intentionally. Don't rush to the market. Question? Yes. Thanks for this opportunity. Um, so I have um, two questions. Um, the first one is, what advice can you give a guy that has a lot of uh, ideas, but he does not have, he does not know the one to follow first? And secondly, what, can you, uh, what advice will you give someone that has started um, two businesses for the past two years, but it's not really, the business is not really productive, but it's still hoping that the business will, prog uh, will progress. Okay. You know, there is a man who was um, arrested yesterday by Officer Wu and Brother Shaggy. The person is here. Banky W. What this fantastic young man, married to the sister of my staff, Tosi, started out with, is not what you are seeing him do today. This is one of the most diversified person in this room. He used to sing. He's acting now. He was arrested yesterday, released today. You know. Now, what you need to do is you first must understand what is your own core competence, which is why I say specialize first. 70% of your time and income must be spent in your own area of specialization. What do you know best to do? That's the platform. That's the foundation. You can't build something on nothing. So you have to first have a foundation. Build that foundation. Make yourself solid in the space where you have the talent and the ability. Of those two things, there is one you do better. Which one? And don't be in a hurry. There is always the, uh, the intention that let me go elsewhere quickly. I think I have done this enough. No. iPad, iPhone, Macintosh. If you go through the story of Steve, you will see how thorough at different epochs that he had to follow through before he died. And guess what? Because he laid a fantastic foundation, Tim Cook has taken Apple bigger and better than he left it. So you don't want to have an enterprise that will die with you. So you need something over and above you. So don't be in a hurry. Ronaldo will celebrate, isn't it? But if you know what goes on, behind the scene, if you know the training regimen that guy goes through personally over and above what his other colleagues are doing, then you'll understand why he's still doing what he's doing at the age of 36. So first, specialize. Then, generalize. And you need help us? We are here in TNH to help you. That's what we do best. Any other question? Yes, ma'am. Okay, madam, that's the last question. Let's give madam the privilege of the last question. That's our own. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I wanted to ask how we can encourage our young adults, uh, especially our children, um, maybe much earlier to um, have that entrepreneurial um, drive. I think a lot of us, our uh, parents made, well, I wouldn't say mistakes, but it was usually summer vacation, even when you worked, it was to spend on yourself. You didn't think of, you know, 
and I, I look now and I'm thinking with, with what is going on now around us, how can we train our children and encourage them to look beyond consumption? You know, I don't, because sometimes you, you read these stories about the Jeff Bezos, they started quite early, you know, sometimes in their garages, sometimes as Elon Musk, what's that guy's name? At 15, he was doing this. So how, you know, I know not everybody is entrepreneurial, but surely we can, you know, train them or at least teach them to learn something of that aspect, to be a platform for them, for whatever else their passion may be in the future so that they don't make the kind of mistakes we, we made. Okay, um, a very deep question. Um, I'll just summarize in this way so that we can uh, bring on board one of the greatest in Nigeria today uh, to share knowledge with us. Our parents failed us. We shouldn't fail our children. One of the things we must consistently guide against is this. When you plant a seed at infancy stage, you can turn that plant, which has become a tree, in any direction you so desire, at very tender stage. If you allow it to grow beyond a particular point, it's either you break it or you leave it. The foundational stage in the lives of our children are the most critical period that they require the training that will carry them far into the future. Once you fail the, at that point in time, you will need a PGT to come and help you to resolve that problem. That's unfortunately the reality of our time. When it, which is why if you see the story of Jesus Christ, he tells you a lot of stories. His beginning, humble beginning, the background and the rest of them. The tutelage he went through, in spite of the fact that this is the Son of God, he was carefully guided. But we let our kids today to be open to all the evils of this world. And we call it liberalism, we call it different names. And of course, the consequences is what we're going through now. So we're going to see far more. It's going to get worse. But yet, because we are created by Him for a purpose. We need to create that island of success, which is what we're trying to do here at TNH and in all the churches where Christ is well preached. But it's a tough journey. It's not a one-time thing. Where do they spend their time? On what do they spend their time? Who is feeding them? What messages are they receiving? What traits are you seeing? that you are overlooking, which is dangerous and inimical to their own health? Those are questions we all need to answer. It's a lifetime question. I can't answer you directly the way you desire, but it's a lifetime thing. I want to thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. Uh, and, I, and I know, I know that uh, without a doubt, I will have people to celebrate from amongst you very soon. You'll be on YouTube, you'll be on Google, you'll be everywhere, you know. One of the best things that can happen to man is when you have become an ambassador of success, such that your name is typed, Banky Wellington, and stories just come about you. That will be your story in Jesus' name. God bless you.